the setup of this problem is that instead of just having two quantities, now we have six. We have x and y, which are a pair of real numbers that we have no control over right now. And we also have four other real numbers, a, b, c, and e. And we do happen to know that the distance, for example, from x to e does have an upper bound of 5. Right? So x is no more than 5 units away from e. x is no more than 6 units away from b. b is no more than 4 units away from c, and so on and so forth. Right? So this little, anybody here taking graph theory this semester? Taking graph theory before? Oh, wait, we're not offering, we're, thinking, we're offering it in the spring. Uh, if this is an interesting problem to you, you may want to take graph theory <laughs> next semester. Um, but this is kind of a variant of what's sometimes called the traveling salesman problem. Uh, maybe you've heard of that before, uh, where a salesman has to go to a, a bunch of different stops along a sales route and wants to figure out how to make all those stops with driving as few miles as possible. Right? This, this is that problem just reframed into an analysis context. Um, but we know how far away from one another these various quantities are. And the question is, how do we figure out an upper bound on the distance between x and y. How far apart may x and y be if their distances to all these other quantities are as shown in this graph? So your ultimate goal in this problem is to find an upper bound on the distance from x to y. Less than, less than or equal to, or it might just be less than, because these distances are actually um, sharp inequalities, question mark. And there may be a whole bunch of different ways to get these bounds. Try to find the best one. Try to find the smallest possible upper bound on the distance from x to y using the information shown in this chart and using the add and subtract trick uh, that we talked about from today. So in our first attempt, what I saw your groups doing in your first attempt at finding uh, an upper bound on the distance between x and y from this figure is that you said, all right, well, let's just use a single triangle, the triangle that connects x and y to e in this diagram and say, because I know the distance from x to e is no more than 5, and the distance from y to e is no more than 10, uh, that that gives me control over the absolute values of x minus e and e minus y. And using the triangle inequality, by adding and subtracting e, we can split it apart and show that the distance from x to y must be less than 15. And that's true. That's a true statement. Um, but it may not be the best upper bound, or what analysts sometimes call the sharpest upper bound. Uh, on this inequality, because it may be that we can, by comparison of x and y to other numbers in this diagram, we may be able to get that upper bound to be smaller. And a large part, honestly, of what research analysts do, ma mathematicians who do research and analysis, <laughs> this is going to sound silly, but 99% of their job is making inequality sharper. <laughs> and that's the process that we're about to go through right now, in which I saw some of your groups going through um, a few minutes ago. So what was the next thing that you tried? after you looked at 15 and said, maybe we can do better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the next thing I heard people doing in their groups is say, all right, let's take a look not just at x and e, for example, but maybe we can use this diagram to find some other triangles that can maybe let us get a, a sharper bound on some distances. So one of the things that I, I heard in some groups is, well, let's see if we can figure out if there is an upper bound on the distance from x to a. So if I want to use the triangle inequality to get an estimate for that distance, um, what two distances are going to let me do that? X to B and B to A. So I might try and use this triangle. And if I use this triangle, I can find uh, an upper bound on the distance from X to A by adding and subtracting B minus B plus B minus A, split it apart absolute value of x minus b plus absolute value of b minus a. x to b is less than 6. b to a is less than 5. And so x to a has to be less than 11. Okay. So this orange hypotenuse here, if you like, it's not a right triangle, but if it were, um, we know we could write less than 11 on that. And so if I'm going to take a journey that takes me from x to a and thence to y somehow, um, then we know that the journey from x to a will take us no more than 11 units of distance. Um, and if I use that, then how can I get a better bound on the distance from x to y? Yeah, let's, instead of adding and subtracting e, as we did here, let's add and subtract a. And the work that we did in orange 
convinced us that we can control the first of these two sum ends, distance from x to a. Distance from x to a, less than 11. Distance from a to y is less than 2. And so this convinces us that the distance from x to y, not only is it less than 15, but we can also now say that it's less than 13. So that's a sharper upper bound on the distance from x to y. Um, OK. And so if we were thinking about what that all of this work looks like in total, we're sort of coming up with a bound on the distance from x to y by taking a longer path through this diagram. Right? We're taking a path that starts from x, it goes to b, then it goes up to a, then it goes down to y. So we're kind of taking this green path. It leads us all the way around the circle this way. Would there have been a way for us to do these two steps in one? So that, this is the piece that I'm saying is going to kind of supercharge your work on this problem a little bit. Um, because with the triangle inequality in its original form, it kind of forces you to just go one triangle at a time in this diagram. And that can take a while, especially if you want to take a longer path even than the one that we just took. Um, so here's a suggestion. We could have approached it this way. Here's how we could have done that in one fell swoop. Arithmetic, after all, is pretty permissive here. There's no reason that we need to add and subtract only a single quantity arithmetic-wise when we do this process. So let's say I wanted to go from x to b. Well, then I'm going to need to control the distance from x to b like this. But if I subtract b inside this inequality, inside the absolute value, rather, I need to add it back. So I know how to control the distance from x to b, but I don't know yet how to control the distance from y to b. So I need another intermediary there. So I need to go from b to a. So I'll subtract a. But if I subtract it, I also have to add it. Right? And now this seems to give me my whole trip from x to b, and there to a, and from there to y. And the only question now, and it's a question we need to quickly answer before we wrap up today, is how is the triangle inequality going to help me with not a sum of two quantities inside the absolute value, but now it's going to look like a sum of three quantities inside the absolute value. Well, what do you think? How can the triangle inequality help us with this? A bunch of numbers that you know. Yeah, we have a bunch of numbers that we know. The problem is that the triangle inequality only really lets us do two at a time. Absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to absolute value of a plus absolute value of b. We know we can split across a single sum inside an absolute value. But can we split across both this sum and that sum, is what I'm asking, I guess. So one way to do it would be to just do it iteratively. Take the first of these two addition signs and split across that one. So in the inequality, I would first split this up into the absolute value of x minus b plus the absolute value of b minus a plus a minus y. So we know the triangle inequality can do that for us, because we're only splitting across a single plus sign. But then we would just use it again on this sum right here and get less than or equal to, this part hasn't changed, but the second part's going to be absolute value b minus a plus absolute value a minus y. And now, each of these three distances is a distance that we have control over based on the information given to us in the problem. Right? So absolute value of x minus b is less than 6. Absolute value of b minus a is less than 5. And absolute value of a minus y is less than 2. And so there's my 13. So the way that I, the order in which I wrote these additions and subtractions actually does matter, is your point, right? If I had written x minus a first and then a, uh, so I've gone a first and b second. Even though the arithmetic still works out just fine, a minus b plus b minus y, the problem is that if I were to split this apart, and this is Kenny's point, that I don't have control over absolute value of x minus a, not directly, right? I would have to do some more work. And I wouldn't have control over the distance from b to y either. Uh, I would need to do some more work there. So as you're doing this multiple steps, um, you know, pay attention to which order you do it in, so that when you use the triangle inequality to break it apart, you know that you have control over each of the terms that you end up with. Two suggestions I want to leave you with here. First of all, that 13 is still not the lowest upper bound for x minus y in this diagram. So continue to think about what might be a better upper bound. Um, but to supercharge your work, let's just quickly convince ourselves that the triangle inequality will always work 
with any number of any finite number of sum ends inside of the absolute value, right? Because it works for two, we can use this kind of iterative process to show that it will work for three, it'll work for four, it'll work for any number n. Um, so that's this corollary that I've written up here at the top of the screen. That any finite number n of sum ends that I have inside the absolute value, the absolute value of that sum is always less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values. And the proof here is by induction. By induction on n. Starting from n equals 2. Okay. So in the base case, is just the triangle inequality. Absolute value x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to absolute value x1 plus absolute value x2. That is the triangle inequality. So that we can assume to be true. This is a corollary of the triangle inequality. And then the induction step is that if we assume absolute value of x1 plus dot, dot, dot up to xn is less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values, dot, 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 xn, then all we need to do is show that this holds if we go all the way to n plus 1, plus xn plus xn plus 1. And so all we'll do is just use the regular triangle inequality to split this sum right there, less than or equal to absolute value of x1 plus up to xn, plus absolute value of xn plus 1. And then we'll use our induction hypothesis to split the other one. And I will leave it at that for today. So the good news is, if you can find another path, even if it goes through six other different vertices, um, you can split all of it at once, just using one big add and subtract trick in the triangle inequality.